The Games Workshop might have wasted a million bucks. Uh, something kind of silly. Spiky Bits. Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com. And in this video, well, we're going to talk about something that may or may not have actually happened and maybe could have been avoided and saved Games Workshop a million bucks or so. I'll be the first to tell you, I don't have all the answers. I've seen a lot of things from Games Workshop over the many, many years. I've dealt with them personally and dealt with them secondhand through getting reports by stores and, and just kind of watching. And I got to tell you, overall, you know, I think I think a good rule of thumb is uh, never attribute to malice uh, what you can explain adequately away by stupidity. But that goes for any company, I suppose, at this point in life or in the time we are in. So a concerned retailer, and I, I talk to dozens of retailers just about every day across multiple continents that always have the best things to say about Games Workshop. And I'm being facetious, of course. They don't. They, they, I am, people only talk to me about Games Workshop when, when they have a problem with Games Workshop, which, you know, hey, take it for what it is, right? So is it, is it always a big problem? Well, it always seems to be. And to, you know, to them, which, which I completely understand because you got to remember, Games Workshop used to be very easy to deal with as a retailer. It's it, it's 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 kind of, it was kind of a win-win to be honest with you because yeah, you can do cards, trading cards and everything. And trading cards are great, but the margins are very small, but they turn super quick. So you can make a decent amount, but you have to do kind of more work, I suppose, is a good way to an analogy for it. But with Games Workshop, the margins are much higher but you have to spend out more and you have to have more and you also have that play space, which we've covered before and how much, you know, it costs for actual play space, which has gone up quite a bit, uh, you know, since the pandemic and things and, and rent has gone up. So GW overall is a good thing to carry in your game store. But that being said, there's a lot of releases that just aren't going to work for every game store, but there's also a lot that are going to be super worth buying. And the, the problem now is that when the teasers go up on the Sunday on Warhammer Community, stores have to get their numbers in within several days. And those numbers are locked in. You can't change them up or down. And then you pay for them the next week or the current week. It depends on the arrangement from what I understand with a Games Workshop. And then you wait basically either a week or a half or two weeks for your stuff to come in and for it to sell. And that can be a lot of money out in the wind, just chilling with no, you know, just, hey, I bought a bunch of these battle forces, we'll say, and it's just out, yeah, I got 10 grand out there. Yeah, I, I would be nervous too, you know, but that being said, if you're a game store and you're a business and you're treating the game store like a business and not a clubhouse, and I'm sure we all, we all have been to those, then you're probably going to have, you know, some money laying around to spend on things and know, understand that you're going to be out of that money for a while. But where the things that stores get upset with is Games Workshop has had a lot of issues in the past with misshipments and things just going awry and their complete orders not coming in. And then, you know, it turns into a big episode of finger pointing, like who do I get my money from, but whatever. So that the reason I'm telling you this is because if you can be very patient with your local game stores, because they're, they're already putting up with a lot of mess from GW and hearing it on the front end too, can sometimes be a little, you know, deflating, I guess is, is the best term there. But a lot of game store owners are on high alert, right? That when they see packages come in, you know, they got to get out their invoice. They got to check it all in. They got to make sure that it's all there and it's exactly what they ordered and that their credits because every, you know, no, no invoice is coming in complete. So you're always going to have something that's, that's misshipped. And then you got to go and you got to like compare it to, you know, your, what you paid for the order. And if there's a discrepancy, you need to get a credit, right? And in a lot of cases, this happens automatically, but in a lot of cases it doesn't too, right? Because Games Workshop just put an authorization on the card. Hard. And then when the actual order ships and goes through the, the shipping process, in theory, whatever ships is the only thing that is captured off that authorization for the credit card, right? Or if they're using terms, in theory, none of this matters because it's all invisible money at that point, but you still have to check your balances, right? So game store owners have to be very on top of what's going on. And one game store owner was very on top of the Solar Auxilera Battle Group release recently. And so much so that he sent me a very interesting image of 
a blank shipping label that was put over a normal UPS shipping label. So if, if you have the UPS printer, you can just hit advance and it'll spit out a blank label and you can literally do whatever you want with that blank label. But what it looks like Games Workshop did was take the blank label and put it over another shipping label just to cover it up so it doesn't get scanned by the UPS system. And he thought that was kind of weird. He's like, oh, so did this go to somebody else's store? Like, is this the right box? Like, what's going on with this? So he was already on high alert because some things had happened to his orders and getting misshipped and things in the past. But what actually looked to have happened is that this label is a shipping label from Games Workshop. From Games Workshop to Games Workshop, in fact. So Games Workshop, shipped this box and this this box was actually a case of five of these solar auxiliary battle groups inside of one case that weighed about 18 pounds i think that's like eight kilograms or something it gets weird because you're going from different areas that have different weight systems so this label was a air a ups air saver label from nottingham england to memphis tennessee in the states as you can imagine, knowing probably what you know about shipping, these boxes weighed a lot and it probably cost a lot of money to ship this box. Air freight, well not for, not even freight, air saver, it's going in the air across the Atlantic Ocean. And, and here's the actual zoomed in label here. You can see it, it went from, from a GW Nottingham to Memphis, Tennessee. Apparently they have a separate air freight account, I guess. Yeah. Pretty interesting stuff there. Uh, I was able to get the tracking number off of the, the image that was sent and did some did some digging and this is what we came up with. So they were shipped out on the 9th of January, 2024. They were delivered uh, three days later. I think the article actually says two, so that's a typo. Uh, three days later in Memphis, Tennessee. And you probably weren't thinking to yourself, well, holy crap, why did they send, why did they air ship a, a case weighing 18, 18 pounds when they could have just, you know, shipped these across the ocean like they normally do freight wise, right? The the Baltimore bridge collapse hadn't happened yet and they don't always necessarily even go through those ports. In a lot of cases, they go through Savannah to go up into Tennessee or sometimes even Norfolk from what I've seen on the port manifest. So I've actually never seen them go through Baltimore to be quite honest with you. Now, they would have when Games Workshop was in Baltimore back in 2008, but they're not anymore. So we're in the, we're in the future now, y'all. So I just thought, I thought that was interesting. I was like, yeah, that's exactly what it looks like happened. And I was like, well, let me do, let me do some digging. And I came up and I put all the information because I have a picture of the shipping label. Here it is. I put all the information in just to, just to figure out how much this actually might have cost Games Workshop. Now, again, we don't know that this happened for the whole shipment, but I called a bunch of retailers uh, out of the blue and I was like, hey, how many solo auxiliaries you got? You know, and blah, blah, blah. Did you get a case? You know, some of the picture I was like, does, do you have this on your box? Can you confirm this? And yes, every single store I talked to in North America, in fact, which also includes Canada, uh, had this on their box. So that was pretty interesting. And if you start digging into how much it, it costs to ship, there's a little bit of variance because the dimensions of the box, even though it was 18 pounds, theoretically would have counted as a 24 pound box because of volumetric pricing. So these companies have figured out how much space, cubic square footage of space in all of their ships and things and airplanes and, and, and delivery trucks are worth. And if you have a box of a certain dimension and it doesn't weigh a certain weight, they are gonna assign a minimum weight to it because that's what it's worth for them. They've done all the algorithms and everything. And it's, it's called like volumetric pricing, I believe. And anyways, so this 18 pound box is actually worth a 24, it, it becomes a 24 pound box. So not only is it actually weigh more in the eyes of UPS, but it looks like they actually could have shipped it cheaper, but they selected the saver option when they could have just selected the, the regular expedited and would have also been there at the end of day by the day that it got delivered. And the saver, well, I guess the saver got there a little sooner, but if they would have waited two extra days, it would have been 40 pounds cheap or $40 cheaper. Now, yeah, that's $631 for that those five boxes so that's more than a hundred dollars in added shipping costs to games workshop to ship it that way now 
Granted, we all know Games Workshop probably gets a little bit of a discount on their UPS. So if they were gonna ship this entire run of Solar Auxiliary Battle Groups across via plane, across the ocean, to Memphis, Tennessee to go out to North America stores, they probably got a little bit of a discount. But if they did that, if they did that, we can approximate out a few things. So I've seen the stuff hit the ports and I've seen the numbers coming in through the port manifest, which are still still visible in a lot of cases. You got to do a little sleuthing to kind of get through it all and, and, and dig through all the code words and things because Games Workshop was was on to this ability and has disguised a lot with their partners in China, their manufacturing partners in China, and then also how they ship stuff over from uh, England, they black shrink wrap their pallets so that there is no, you can't take pictures of it, you know, and obviously you can cut into it because these things are in Connex uh, containers and things. So anyways, they've locked down a lot of it, but the, the few things we're actually able to, to see through the port manifest is that they brought in roughly 8,000 ish of faction expansion box sets. And what do I mean by that is things like uh, space marines that are that are specific to a chapter like say dark angels they probably brought in 8000 of each of the dark angel boxes to the states and about 20000 of the books from what i can tell from the information i have at hand so say they brought in 8000 of these solar auxiliaries which i can't tell anything about because like again they shipped them air apparently i never saw these come through the ports so i'm just gonna assume they sent the whole shipment over to the states this way so we'll, we'll put eight thousand on it so you put eight thousand on it divided by five because there's five of these battle groups in a case you get 1600 multiply 1600 by the roughly 600 some dollars that this cost them in theory they probably got a discount still uh and it's over a million dollars it's over a million dollars now granted if they got a 15% discount, it's like 921,000. If they got 20% off, it's like 867,000. You can see it in the article here, but that's still a lot of money. And, and I feel like, I mean, opinion time, not me not saying facts. I feel like as an opinion, it's a bit wasteful, but is it wasteful to GW? I don't know. So they ship these over before this preview even happened at the LVO in January, three weeks in fact. So these things were in the warehouse before the preview even hit. So to me, it's like, well, okay, it kind of makes sense if I'm Games Workshop. Like they know there's an upcoming preview for XYZ item. Okay, are, the, are we gonna ship it out? Like, I guess they could have shipped it out. Maybe they wanted it on hand because they were gonna actually release it after the preview. And we've seen that sometimes. You see the preview and the next week the stuff goes up on pre-order. That could have happened. And that would make sense to have them in stores or in the warehouse ready to ship the stores. But what actually happened was they didn't hit stores for three months. So I feel like that million bucks, if that was the plan to release them in March, that million bucks was, or whatever, close to a million bucks, was probably a little wasteful. But again, it's hard to say. It's just kind of like a little peek behind the curtain of things that happen behind the scenes at Games Workshop that might make sense to them, don't maybe make sense to us as the public. But at the end of the day, does it even does it even matter? Because you're yeah, while it added that much more money to the cost of each army box or did it does it matter overall on the year for Games Workshop when they're making as much money as they are? It's really hard to say. I, I think I think the optics are bad, but does it matter in the long run? No, probably not. But if things like this happen over and over and over and over and again, and the only reason this was even noticed is because a store owner was on such high alert because he's had so many problems with his shipments, then I would say it might be a problem. But I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments because you can look at this all sorts of different ways. I personally think it's a little wasteful. Well, I definitely love the new Solar Auxiliary models and importing them over from Forge World to plastic uh, kits is uh, definitely gonna be a boon for a lot of collectors and hobbyists out there on the Horus Heresy side. I personally can use this stuff all for my Deathcore Krieg and, and I did in the past, actually all my Basilisks are Sol Auxiliary. So it'll be cool to kind of see, maybe I'll have to upgrade because they're gonna have that interior compartment. So I can't wait to see those as well. So what do you 
think of this? Was it wasteful? Was it not wasteful? Were, were they just hedging their bets? I mean, did they do a lot more of the stuff that we we never even are privy to? And I guess that's all part of the uh, the bottom line at the end of the year. Either way, let us know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to give me the very first to like and comment on all our future videos.